Good morning. How are you today? There's a mist that hangs about the trail today, like the mist that hangs about our, our country. Everybody seems to be groping for what exactly is wrong with what Trump is doing. And, you know, they rub their hands together and they say, that's not, not, that's not right, and they, they don't know why. But if you remember the Federalist Papers way back in high school, then there's some guidance in there as to how things should be and how they are not. Uh, I had to revisit it somewhat during the impeachment hearings when I was with the Democrats of special counsel, and we were resisting the question of whether or not what uh, Clinton had done was impeachable or not. And we thought it was personal and that it wasn't. Didn't, didn't mean we thought what he did was right, but we thought it wasn't uh, an impeachable offense. And you've heard that argument before. But what do the Federalist Papers say about where we are today? And the notion is that we have three separate departments that are separate and interdependent. So you have the courts, you have the legislature, and you have the executive. Now, Madison, I'm pretty sure it was he who said this, and he said it in more than one of the papers that were filed commenting on the Constitution that was written in secret. He complained that if you were to have an executive and the legislative and they were as one, that is, say, one controlling the other, like, say, the executive usurping the power of Congress and asserting it as his own, you would have tyranny. What better definition? We don't have to create it now. It was written in the Federalist Papers in 1787. Now, imagine, and I know Madison didn't even consider this, a chief executive who usurps the power of Congress and would control the court. Double tyranny. That's the objection here. And transparently, he has members of key, Trump has members of Congress willing to support a Supreme Court member that he hopes will vote for him if there's an issue in the current election. So you close that gap in terms of violating the very spirit and meaning of the Constitution by taking acts that are tyrannical in a democracy. Thus the accusation that you are not worthy to be our president and you should resign, something he would never do because we have a fanatic there. Now Trump must believe, now he may not be right, but he must believe he doesn't have a chance of winning. And that's why he's attacking the election. That's why he's hoping the Congress and the Supreme Court will save him. Now, some of these are Hail Mary passes that are not going to happen, but that's his thinking. And when he said that he wouldn't uh, transition into a new regime if it were Biden instead of he, although he didn't use those words, uh, what was he doing? He was showing his desperation because the polls that came out today, and you know, they can change, show him in a disastrous position. That is, he is lagging in the battleground states, which was his key to winning in 2016 with or without cheating. So we can expect fairly, there's a good chance he should lose. And our concern is that will he cheat in such a way that he will distort the election and prevail. So that's an important thing. You see it in the positions he's taking as well. He's coming out saying, I am going to support those people who have pre-existing conditions. Well, that's already in the uh, Obamacare. And uh, he's saying it now when he was in office for four years, promising he would say it. So we have a candidate out of control, desperate, prepared to do anything, and not enough people are speaking against him. Uh, Congress should hold hearings. They should do the other things I've suggested. But what we can do is we can talk and we can vote in many of the states. It's already available and we should do so. So I hope you're having a good day, even in the mist. And I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Oh, by the way, there's an argument in the Second Circuit today on the president's taxes at 10 a.m. Talk to you. Bye bye.